The evolution of Christmas. Christmas is for everyone and not only for the children. It is the year's highlight. Even though we may use up far more capital and time than is certainly required, it is a time that all of us plan and struggle hard to give our families and ourselves. So it is essential to know about this beautiful festival and how it has evolved throughout the centuries. And there's only one way to find it out. Let's begin with our video. Christmas can be regarded as the most significant date in the calendar for several businesses ranging from commercial stores, manufacturing, the requirement of food and beverages, and many more. Certainly, it appears to get more agitated, stressful, and costly every year. We will first discuss the first evolutions of Christmas and why it is celebrated. In Old English, you will find that the word for Christmas is Christus Macy, meaning the Mass of Christ. And nowadays, we all celebrate Christmas Day on the 25th of December as the birthday of Jesus Christ. The Western world has utilized the 25th of December as a supposed day to commemorate the birth of Jesus since 345 AD. Before that, the birth was celebrated on the 6th of January. However, the truth is that no one comprehends the precise day or year of Jesus' birthday. Many biblical philosophers and analysts point out that the Bible says about shepherds who are tending herds of sheep on the night Jesus was born and that they would rarely be out in December due to the coldness of the winter season in Judea. Even some scholars believe that Jesus was born in the spring, that is, between March and May, and while the others assert for September. We will likely only realize if some hidden understanding is ever found. The crucial thing is that his birth is recollected and commemorated and the message is kept alive. Over the centuries, Christians have shifted the significance and importance of several ancient pagan traditions, beliefs, and festivals, modifying them to suit Christian beliefs. Some may contend that it was an endeavor to eliminate paganism, while others say it was a mean of settlement and enabled old assumptions to be restored by the new less aggressively. In Egypt and Babylon, you will find that both these places had midwinter festivities and fertility festivals were furthermore well known at this time of the year in many portions of Europe. For example, in Phrygia, the 25th of December was the festivity of the birth of the sun god Addis, and in the historical Persia, they commemorated the origin of their god Mithra. Many thinkers believe that the historical Persian glorifications of the god Mithra plays a direct part in the ancestry of Christmas and goes back some 4,000 years. Let me inform you that Mithra was the god of light in the historical Persia, and the sun was his character. A festivity devoted to Mithra was commemorated from the 17th of December to the 24th of December. During this interval, the winter solstice plunging on the 21st of December was speculated to be the victory of light over dark and good over evil. After Alexander the Great overthrew the Persians, Many of his fighters accepted the glorifications of Mirthra and spread the cult across Asia with their dominations. By the 4th century, it was the major belief in much of Europe coming to be recognized as Deus Sol Invictus Mithras, which means the unconquered sun. Let's, not Let's now talk about the history of Christmas trees. In much the exact way that the early Christian church absorbed and modified the historian Roman festival of Saturnalia to motivate pagan assimilations with Christianity, it did the same with other followings and faiths. There were several pagans in the wilderness of Europe who speculated that trees were sacred and would adorn them and carry them into their homes. There is a mythology that explains that Martin Luther, who was the founder of German Protestantism, began the belief in bringing Christmas trees into the home. The story goes that one Christmas Eve, he wandered into the forest and became fascinated by how gorgeous the fir trees look under the starry sky and captivated by those trees he took one into his residence and positioned candles on it to adorn it. His expectations was to remind his children of the surprise of God's earth. And soon, it became a tradition to decorate the trees for Christmas. The first Christmas tree in England was provided by Prince Albert of German origin to Queen Victoria, his wife, in 1841. From this, the Christmas tree dissipates in popularity throughout England. For centuries, St. Nicholas was commemorated on 6th December and was a leader of Santa Claus and Father Christmas. His ancestries are surrounded by time, and there are several legends about him, though we will possibly never know the actual truth. He was recognized as a wealthy bishop in Mira, Asia Minor, presently Turkey, around 480. Legend has it, he was incredibly kind and decent and was recognized for providing help to the needy 
and privately leaving people in need presents to assist them through their difficulties by dropping gold coins down their chimney. In addition, it is believed that hanging a sock over the fireplace on Christmas Eve started through him. With several various ethnic groups which were integrating together in the USA, several legends and customs came to be blended, modified, and approved. For example, the Dutch called him Santa Claus, which developed in America to become Santa Claus. In their mythology, he was a spiritual character who was very distinguished and tall and drove through the air on a white horse. In Germany, he was recognized as Saint Nicholas and had an elf as a friend called Black Peter, whose assignment was to discipline nasty children. He finally lost his elf friend and religious personality to become a fat, lively old man. Before the 19th century, especially in New England, Puritans had challenged the Christmas festivities and Christmas Day had been only another workday. Later, migrants from many other nations gave rise to their own beliefs and rituals but frequently found that, for many justifications, they could not simulate the same celebrations in their new country as they commemorated in their old. In the American South, you must have already seen that the weather and geography were distinct from England and Northern Europe and the availability of conventional food from their nations of origin may furthermore have been restricted. Accordingly, it was essential to adopt to local circumstances. Furthermore, the mass immigrations from Europe to North America arose in several different cultures which were mixed together, adapting and revising each other's traditions and exercises, especially in the towns and cities where migrants from the England, Spain, France, Germany, and Scandinavia, along with many other nations, mingled voluntarily with each other. Some of these committees commemorated Christmas with dinners, loud and rowdy civic behavior, and drunkenness. Pursuing an English tradition, some merrymakers wore clothing and went from door to door for blessing of food and drink. Other reasonable presents were provided by the wealthy to their attendants, and it was not an exercise at the time to provide presents to families. During the 19th century, the fast accumulating industrial economy assisted the innovations of a new middle class that admired family life and residence in society. It also gave rise to many more products accessible to the market. With this priority on family and home, Christmas came to be seen as a means to bringing families together while providing outstanding regard to children. Christmas came to be a family festivity and holiday with gifts being swapped between family members and children. Today, as you can see, globalizations and the expanded movement of people worldwide are generating together all their varied cultures, beliefs, and notions. As people unite, so do beliefs and legends in the tremendous melting pot of culture. Contemporary Christmas, as we understand it today, has developed from this melting pot and has greatly impacted how Christmas is celebrated in many distinct nations worldwide. Even with all this distinct variety of religions and ethnic organizations, there are still main unifying themes that give rise to Christmas very much a community festivity as well as one of faith and tradition. Public skyscrapers, city centers, shopping malls, and squares are all adorned with colored lamps and shops filled with blessings and gifts and playing melodious Christmas songs. Christmas cards and presents are traded, and even though it has evolved powerfully, many people come together in a mood of goodwill, unity, and friendship. So that's it for today. Did you find this video useful? Let me know in the comments. Bye for now.